What's up, guys? Pitman, Matt Marquel, and Varsity coming at you with this week's best to last. Um, this week's best to last was a cumulative effort based on everything I've seen in the uh, preseason schedule. Uh, some rankings will be a little bit different as I just took a look at the whole picture and um, kind of put together my thoughts. And um, this is where the 23 teams in the three conferences, Southwestern, uh, South Mech 7, and the IMEC are... Um, Pretty much ranked from best to last. So starting at number 23, I got Hopewell. Uh, 22 is Ganger. 21, South Mecklenburg. Number 20, Audrey Kell. Number 19, Independence. Number 18, Philip O'Berry. Number 17, Rocky River. Number 16, West Charlotte. Number 15, Lake Norman. Number 14, Olympic. Number 13, Mooresville. Number 12, East Mech. And number 11 is Huff. All right, now we're jumping into the top 10. Number 10 is Porter Ridge. They had a bye week last week. Um, they're 2-2 two and two on the year, but they've been competitive, especially that crazy Sun Valley game. Um, I think they're going to be right there with a shot um, to compete in the uh, Southwestern Conference. Number nine, Hickory Ridge also had a bye last week. They're undefeated. Some people question the level of uh, competition. Uh, but like I've said with them before, they've won all those games by double digits. And now, you know, they have the time to uh, prove themselves in the uh, tough Southwestern 4A with all the Charlotte schools and Porter Ridge. <laughs> Number eight is Providence. Um, tough, tough overtime loss to Butler. And um, I tell you, they are <clears throat> five points from away from being undefeated. And um, that, that's a huge, huge success um, if you're Brad Bowles, the head coach of Providence. I know he said on Twitter he was really proud of his guys, and he should be. Um, they are right there with some very good schools. And uh, going into um, conference play, um, it's going to be really interesting in that conference. Um, the South makes seven. I think that, that conference is going to be um, real fun to watch. Uh, number seven is Vance. Uh, they won over South Mech last week. Um, looks like they got some offensive things straightened out. Uh, quarterback Nigel Somerville is playing uh, very well. Uh, threw the ball well in that game. Uh, defense gave up some points, but, you know, give some credit to South Mech for um, getting some things together and getting that going on the offensive side of football, too. Uh, big game coming up this week with them and Mallard Creek in the traditional rival game. Uh, number six is Myers Park. Um, had a bye. Um, this team is undefeated. Um, you know, some games are closer than, you know, some people expected, but um, they came out the uh, non-conference unscathed, and they're ready to try and go win a conference championship. Number five is Butler, one of the main threats to that conference championship for Myers Park. They won that overtime game over Providence. And, um, you know, some people are saying, well, why are they number five? if they lost the game and then Myers Park didn't. The main thing to me is that, you know, that quality win of going on the road at Richmond and then coming back against a good Providence team and winning that as young as Butler is, um, that I think that really shows some strength there. Um, and that's why I have them at number five here. Uh, number four is North Mech, undefeated with a win over Cox Mill. Um, North Mech, um, like Langston Wirt said, and some people are not, you know, acknowledging these guys, but, <laughs> you know, they're 4-0, and um, you can kind of look at their, their opponents and maybe say, okay, they hadn't beaten the best people, but, you know, they're 4-0, and, and they're, they're winning convincingly in most of those games, and they're playing, you know, very well, and that's giving them confidence, and when you give confidence to a younger but talented team, uh, who knows what can happen? So they're going into the IMAC, and, you know, I got them ranked as the second best team in the IMAC right now. Uh, number three is West Mech. Um, they lost to Scotland County last week for their first loss on the season. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, there's a huge game coming up this week with them and the number two team here. I'm getting ready to say in a minute. And um, that game could go a long way in determining the uh, South Mech 7 Conference Championship. And uh, number two is Harding. Uh, they lost to Mallard Creek. And I'll tell you, the main reason I put them at number two is when was, when was the last time you had a team hold Mallard Creek to negative 10 rushing yards in one half of play, 
holding Mallet Creek to 96 yards total offense in a game and um, have them down for the uh, majority of the game in a just an old school defensive struggle. And then what happened in the fourth quarter, you know, I, I go back and I say, you know, that goes back to that experience. And, um, you know, Mallet Creek, me and, you know, the champions they are, they found a way to make plays. And the defense picked up the offense, and they found a way to win the game. But when you when I saw that kind of performance, you know, that, that put Harding at, at number two for me. And then number one, of course, is still Mallet Creek. Um, despite, you know, all those struggles, they found a way to uh, put up – this is unbelievable. They put up 30 points with only 96 yards of offense. I mean <laughs> – that that's just a team win right there. Special teams was big. Um, the defense obviously was big, and um, you know they're they're still number one right now. But when you look at the conferences, and I'm gonna go through them real quick. Uh, you got the IMEC. Um, you know, we got Mallet Creek on top there. My projection, but um, I think North Mex a threat. I think Vance is a threat. Um, and, and, you know, even though this school has had some, some different things go on, you know, if Huff pulls it together and can play consistently, you know, they can, you know, pull an upset also. Um, and then you jump over to the Southwestern. I'll tell you, man, I think for a long time, the Southwestern wasn't wide open. I think this year, this thing is wide open, man. You got Butler, you got Myers Park, you got Porter Ridge, you got Hickory Ridge, and if East Met can can develop that passing game and get it going consistently, they can pull an upset too. Um, you've got a lot of teams there, and don't don't forget Rocky River. They they are the best zero and four team around, man. They've been so close. So, you know that Southwestern Conference. You know I I can put an order together, but I think they are they are this tight um, going into conference play. And then you got the South Mech 7, and I tell you, man, you got some heavy hitters. And um, Harding, you got West Mech, and you got Providence, I think, are the top three in that league. And, um, you know, going right into it, Harding's out West Mech and Providence kicking off the uh, conference play. So, you know, the tests continue for them. And, um, you know, Olympic is showing that they're improving, especially on defense. They held a, a really good Sun Valley team to 27 points, which is an accomplishment. If you haven't seen Sun Valley, that offense is something crazy. Um, you know, so it's going to be really, really fun. I think for the first time in a while, um, you can make a, a, a case that all three conferences are as open as they've ever been. So we're going to have some really fun games here coming up. And um, it, it's really nice to see some new blood like Langston said in the Observer um, stepping up to the plate and um, having good seasons. So... Uh, we'll be out there covering it, guys. Uh, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching, and uh, good luck in conference play kicking off this week. Thanks.